Hello, everyone. My name is Johnny Alexander. Welcome to another episode of Writer's Chat. I'm here with my co-host, Brandy Bro, and our special guest and returning co-host, I guess you could say, um, Bethany Jett. And we're going to be talking today about TikTok, <clears throat> reels, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so let me tell you about Bethany real quick. She's a multiple award-winning author, a ghostwriter, and marketer who received the Distinguished Scholar Award for earning the top GPA in her master's program, where she focused on communications, marketing, and PR. She co-owns Serious Writer and Platinum Literary Services and loves everything about the publishing industry except the rejections, which <laughs> we can all relate to that, right? She is a military wife to her college sweetheart and a work from home mama of boys, my three adorable grandsons. She loves planners, suspense novels, and all things girly. And just to make it clear, she is my daughter, which is why she's a mom to my grandchildren, to three of them. So Bethany, welcome back to Writer's Chat. We are so excited to have you with us today to talk about things that I know very little about, despite having- Me too, yep. <laughs> as my daughter and, um, so yeah, I'm just going to turn it over to you and we're going to ask questions as we go because Brandy, I'm glad to hear that you're as much in the dark about this as I am. And Oh yeah. Yeah. And everybody, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. We'll try to either do them as we go along or at the end, as we always do, we'll bring you back on and um, you can ask those questions. So Bethany, why don't you get us started? Well, it's so good to be back um, with the Writer's Chat family. So, um, and then I love q and I think that's really where, I think that's where the gold comes from, especially like any workshop or teaching and things. And so mom, I'm looking forward to questions from you and Brandy. So um, I thought I'd start off with just kind of dispelling fear about the platforms. And so for the purpose of like this teaching, I'm going to be talking about TikTok and Instagram Reels specifically, but you get to choose what platform you use. So if you're not comfortable on one of them, then don't get on the platform. <laughs> so um, I really don't anticipate, um, I don't have enough information for you to make a decision on what platform is good for you. It would be more of an in-depth talk with you about like your concerns and things. But I will just say that um, the people that I follow in this social media world who are actually they know the people running these companies are actually in the trenches with them. I watch their behavior. And when they start to move, drift away from a platform, I take that as a cue. Maybe I should drift away from the platform. And if they're doubling down on a platform, I sort of take that as a cue to maybe double down as well. So kind of following behavior of people. And I think also when it comes to platforms, you have to make sure that you have an exit strategy in mind so that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak to where not all of your followers are coming from just one place. And so, and you have to be willing to pivot. So if something comes up for TikTok, for example, um, and I feel like, okay, um, this is this has crossed my line <laughs> for using the platform, then I need to know like, okay, I'm gonna stop here, but I've learned enough where I can go somewhere else to use the same strategies or best practices. So that's kind of choose what you wanna do for you, but. I will be talking pro both platforms at this time just for the call. So, so just if that helps <laughs> because I'm using it. Um, but also disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> so look, you have to do your own research. So anyway, um, I guess maybe it would be good to kind of talk about to start and then really hoping to get into some Q and A is what are the two platforms and what are the differences and like why maybe it's good to start using one or both um, for your business, if that works. Yeah, Mom? that's fine. Because like we were talking earlier and I said, you know, I see people's stories, I see reels and stuff as they come through, but I truly, like I hardly ever watch any of them unless someone says, here, mom, watch this. Or, you know, one of the grandkids here, would you please watch this? And I know people really like to do that thing, but I was telling Bethany, I'm such a private person. I don't really, oh. <laughs> not interested in sharing like little moments of my life with people but you know it I like what you said for your business because writing is a business and and we do need to be thinking about that and even if this one isn't like the one that's going to be best for me because of my own angst and whatever 
it's it's good to know and it's good to know how to do it so we really are starting from the basics she is going to you know bethany's going to talk to us as if we don't know because like randy and i both said we do not know and we think probably a lot of of us here today may not really be you know uh, yeah. savvy with with these kinds of things so we're just going to start from the very beginning yes melissa's i hate being on camera and i kind of do too it's like you know i just know <laughs> Randy, okay. you're muted, sweetie. My space bar didn't work. And I was going to say, <laughs> and how do you overcome being a, you know, camera shy? You know, yeah. that's a really important thing. Because a lot of a lot of writers love to be behind their words. They don't like to be behind a screen where everybody sees their face. Yep. And I just saw Sally say yeah. that she's done all her videos without her face. Wow. And I'm going to give you guys some <laughs> tips to do that. Just exactly that. So let's start oh, with the camera. Oh. Okay, so actually, okay. let's start with social media. Okay. I think the best practice is to be where the attention is. So I meet a lot of writers who have an audience of people who are 60 and under, and which is most of us probably, and they are steadfast that Facebook is the place. And I digress. <laughs> so <laughs> let's actually look at some numbers though. So in terms of monthly active users, which is an, is MAU. So if you're searching for these kinds of things, a lot of times social media stats will be broken down and sometimes daily DAU active users. But most of the time you're gonna see the monthly active users because it's just more data. It's just the, the typical. So um, lots of sites will have different rankings just based on whatever they're looking at. but across the board i want to tell you the top five actually i'll tell you the top 10. so facebook has 2.74 billion monthly active users so yes people are on facebook but that's mostly because most of us grew up on facebook it was one of the early ones and so we've had it for a very long time and a lot of people get on facebook because then they get on instagram or whatsapp so yes your audience is there but it doesn't mean that's where they're actively seeking content or going to be the most interactive. So that's just kind of my Facebook thing. And the younger kids, they don't even get on Facebook at all. So we're also seeing this kind of shift. The younger your audience is, Facebook isn't something that they get on. Okay, and then second is YouTube with 2.29 billion act monthly active users. It's important that YouTube is second um, because Facebook owns at least three of the top five social media platforms. And so I think it's important to be diverse with your platforms that you're choosing to use. And YouTube um, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, they kind of work hand in hand. So we, we can talk about that. Number three is WhatsApp, which is like a messaging platform owned by Facebook, 2 billion monthly active users. Instagram is number four with 1.2 billion. So that's Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, just right there. Google is that second spot with YouTube. And then you have, surprisingly, TikTok, which is now we've gone out of the billions and now we're into the millions. And so TikTok is at 689 million monthly active users. So that is your third diverse platform because they're not owned by Google or Facebook. <clears throat> it also tells you that the attention is there. And that out of the 680 million, 89 million people, a lot of them are adults. And then Snapchat comes in next, 498 million. Twitter, there's, now we see this drop with Twitter, which is at 353 million. Underneath that is LinkedIn, which is not surprising because it's mostly business, at 300 million. And then Pinterest, and actually Pinterest should have been up a little bit higher, but Pinterest and then um, Discord as well, which is another platform that serious writers are using. It's very much a forum platform, started out as a gaming platform but it's great for forums. So Pinterest actually has 459, so it should have been right underneath Snapchat above Twitter. So Twitter's kind of like only this, <laughs> um, not surprising. But anyway, so I will put those into the chat because like, I don't like being red numbers because it just mixes up in my head, but I did want to get them on the audio in case anyone was listening um, only. So just move Pinterest up in the list. But so video is super important because Instagram video is a big deal. YouTube is all video. That's number two. Then you've got TikTok coming in at that number five spot. Snapchat's a lot of video as well. So, Do you have numbers on Goodreads or where they would fall in that? I, didn't even, I haven't seen Goodreads in any of the top 10 lists that I've looked at. Okay. 
um, but you could look it up. If you looked up um, monthly active users on Goodreads, like if you Google it, it should tell you. Yeah. I will Google it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so, so, so what's the difference between TikTok and Instagram Reels? That's a question that we get asked a lot. So um, TikTok used to be Musical.ly. I remember when um, I had a Musical.ly account that I was playing around with. And then one day the icon changed because it had been bought by TikTok. So automatically it, it updated everyone's icon. Um, I remember when that happened and the people that I was listening to, they were talking about how Musical.ly, it may, it may die or it may change but be learning how to do short stories and video was a skill that it was teaching and how that would be useful in other platforms uh never guessing that it was going to be what it is today and i think too that um i think TikTok became so big and this is just my opinion i think it was during the quarantine when you had families together and groups together and so while it was very much a younger platform starting out for sure you had the parents or older family members coming in and doing some of this with their kids, but then they started their own accounts. And so it was, I mean, all of us can remember going through that year. So um, a lot of people um, in upper age brackets started going over there and sharing content. And one thing I saw a lot during that time, because that's, that's when I started using it more of myself, was how much fun it was to meet all these new people that were still your people, that it was different than the Instagram audience. And so that was like this just kind of common thing that I was seeing in TikTok about how like, we probably would be friends on Instagram, but we get to do so much more stuff over here on TikTok, more expressive. And the fact that we're, people are becoming more comfortable on camera. I think it was a result of them goofing off over on TikTok for a while, getting comfortable. And then some of them have turned their accounts more business focused. And because of all of that, and the amount of adults that are over there, um, TikTok is like, I think I get an education in um, cleaning. <laughs> like I've learned so much from there, just um, people teaching how to do stuff, make up food recipes. I mean, we had TikTok pasta last night, which is just Google TikTok pasta. And there's one recipe that's going to pop up with feta cheese. It's so good. And I mean, just you can find your community there. I promise you. So TikTok is up to 60 seconds of video. Um, usually 10 to 15 seconds is their first pick for you, or you can change it to 60 seconds. Uh, I just got upgraded to three minutes. So I don't know if that's something that they're rolling out. So I don't have a ton of people, but some people do have three minute video links on there and you can go live. Um, so that's kind of TikTok. And then on Instagram, they came out with reels kind of during quarantine. It's not that old, but it was their, of course, Facebook wants to compete right? <laughs> or put out of business, everybody else. And so Instagram Reels is their version of TikTok. And so when it first released, it was terrible. So they're really kind of upping their game with it, but you can only do up to like 30 seconds on a reel, which is very frustrating because if you're doing content that you're wanting to put on both platforms, you have to shrink your TikTok info down to a 30 seconds to get it on Reels or go over a minute to be able to put it on Instagram TV. So I'm guessing they're going to extend that 30 second requirement because I think it's one thing that's keeping a lot of people over on the TikTok platform is that anything over 30 seconds to a minute doesn't fit on IGTV and also doesn't fit on their reels. I know I find that frustrating. And so that content goes straight to TikTok or I have to create longer. They may very well. I just read an article, I think a couple of weeks ago by um, the owner and saying that they were focusing Instagram and focusing and redirecting it toward video primarily and away from photography. So they may well be doing that. I think so. And that's exactly, that was one of my next points too, is um, officially it's no longer a photo sharing platform. They are a video sharing platform. And so you can put pictures on your feed, but they're going to reward, Instagram will, will reward video. So it's time. <laughs> We haven't done it yet. It's time. So you can create we're, video. We're, we're a bunch of holdouts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you always get the early adopters. <laughs> um, but the thing is, like in the writer space, there's still a lot of room. And so I think it's it's time to be an early adopter of the holdouts, <laughs> maybe. But you can do video, you can put graphics together as a video. You know, with the timer, Canva makes that very easy. And then like Sally said, a lot of hers aren't with her face. So someone who's gonna be good to look at is Virginia Kerr. And it's her handle is at 
this is Virginia Kerr on, um, I think she's on TikTok, but I follow her on Instagram. And her whole thing is how to be, um, how to do well on video. And she also gives tips and suggestions on how to do it without showing your face. Um, her feed is binge worthy. It's practically all reels and video. And she, yeah, Jill said she's awesome. She's amazing. Um, so I highly, highly recommend her. Um, I did, I followed her for two months and then I signed up for her course and I've done one module and it was so good. So I need, I want to finish it, but she gives so much of that information just on her feed that you can really walk away knowing, okay, I can do this better. I know I can do this now. I can try this. So she's incredible. I think she's a really great model to follow in terms of how to share information. So about your business, about the writer, about being um, writing books, any way that you're wanting to express your brand, maybe not your personal life, but the business side or the brand side, she would be somebody that I would say, follow her and see how she's doing it. Um, Sandra asked if she's on Instagram or TikTok. She's on Instagram for sure. And she might be on TikTok too. I just I have followed her over there if she is, which is actually another point. It's interesting what content hits where, what you could do the same video and post it both places and you get different results for both. Um, suddenly something will go viral over on TikTok that, you know, it's how did that happen? <laughs> you know, Like I haven't had that moment yet, but I'm starting to see some of them um, some of the people that we've been work like kind of working with or like suggesting to go on TikTok. Um, my friend Alan, who's been doing dad jokes over there, I was like, this is perfect for TikTok. I'm like, you'll be great at this. So they just told dad jokes, him and his business partner. Um, and they're corny, they're dad jokes. <laughs> but, but he had one, like it jumped, it was at like, I think it's at 39K the last time I checked over a week ago. I don't know, we don't know why, but it's pulling more people in. He's a writer. And so that's how he's kind of like using the platform and it, you know, he's kind of taking off. You just never know. So, um, so anyway, I, I don't want to make sure I didn't miss a, a question. So, and you follow some people over on one platform more than the other. Sometimes you'll follow them on TikTok. There's an Instagram button. So where you can go to their Instagram. So it links them over. So there's been times where I'll follow someone there and then I go follow them on Instagram. And then that becomes the main place because I can do more on Instagram where I, I follow them. Um, Okay, so I want to make sure I, I answer any questions before I go forward to mom or Brandy. I don't see any in the chat. I will say- Yeah, I haven't seen any either. Um, I looked up Goodreads and all I could come up with was a 2019 stat of registered users, which is at 90 million, but I couldn't find, easily find um, monthly actual users for a current. So if someone else, is a better Googler than I am <laughs> and wants to give that a shot, feel free in, in, to share that information. Um, I guess one question I would have is just like going to the very basics, like, like I don't even have it. I've got an Instagram account, but I don't even have a TikTok account. So do you wanna just talk um, for those of us who are way, way, way holdouts, I guess. Yeah. Just the very, very basics of beginning a TikTok and what you might be looking for there. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you're, I mean, I really like this discussion about doing, um, that it doesn't have to be your face. It doesn't have to be you. It's, it, and someone said, did make a comment about they don't want to see the person necessarily. They want to see what they're doing because it, it sounds like, which I didn't really realize, I guess, it is more of a place to, to learn stuff. Like you were talking about the pasta recipe. Or I, you know, laughing of course with with the dad jokes, but it's more, it's not necessarily, oh, here's me walking down the street with my dog kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's an important distinction to make because that's kind of how I think of those kinds of things, and I was like, I'm not interested in that. Okay, so okay, so let's. I'm on, and I'm making a note. So I don't want to. <laughs> I know I, okay. I I blurted out a lot there. <laughs> that was good. No, that was great. So, and then I wanted to go ahead and say. Um, Jill said that one thing was have, that helped was getting on one platform and getting comfortable and then moving to the other one. So mom, I would say don't start TikTok yet. I would just, Ew. well, <laughs> you, you guys heard her say it on the recording. <laughs> there was an, there was an asterisk. <laughs> Here's the asterisk. <laughs> don't start it yet. <laughs> within within like a week or two of doing your Instagram, start it and put the content over there at the same time. Otherwise, you're not you're gonna miss that 
initial yeah. comparison of data. Ah, good. So good. I would actually say start it anyway. <laughs> but um, anyway. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys some people to follow. Okay, let's start with this. If you've got if you're on in Instagram's algorithm, I don't know, but let's talk about TikTok's algorithm for a second. Okay. If a, if you have not started TikTok yet, or even if you have, some of this will still work, you have a clean slate. Now the purpose of the business of TikTok is to show you ads, right? Mm -hmm. On things that you like, right? That's always gonna be something that these platforms do. Yeah. So what? Um, so it's in their best interest to only show you things based on your interaction with the platform. So when you get on TikTok, spend 20 minutes, okay? And only search certain hashtags and only follow certain people. So you're gonna instantly from the beginning teach the algorithm who to show you. And so like, you know, one big thing is, you know, oh, there's all this dirty stuff on TikTok and there's dirty stuff on Facebook and there's dirty stuff on, you know, there's dirty stuff everywhere. Like there's no platform that's ever going to be immune from this. TikTok is really strict. I think that they're one of the more strict platforms actually, because people get, they get warnings and, and banned for things that really shouldn't have been banned for like, but they're just uber restrictive. And the bots are doing it, right? So they have to go in and appeal. I'm like, okay, I was just in a swimsuit. I wasn't in, you know, like, okay, they're not. Anyway, I was seeing people like get banned for things that like they really shouldn't have been banned for. But it's only because the algorithm was like, oh, that might be bad. Take it off. So can you find the stuff? Yes. <laughs> but you're going to teach it to not look for that. And so I'm completely honest when I say like, I don't see teenagers. I don't see any of like the crazy stuff on there because I've taught my algorithm well. So this is like my number one biggest thing. If you're starting, if you see anything that's like weird, you need to teach your algorithm a little bit more. And then you can also, when a photo pops up or a video pop, it's a video. When a video pops up, you can press down on your screen. You know how like it has like the reactive sensors or whatever. And then a button, a box will pop up that you can either report it or you can say not interested. And that's another way that you can teach it like not to do that. But the thing is, if, if you're really into, let's say, Let's say you write um, Christian romance or something and a video pops up and you're like, okay, I don't like this person who did this video. I don't want to see her anymore. If you put not interested, it may, I don't know if the algorithm says not to show you videos from her anymore or if the hashtag she's using, it may start to skew them that way. So I only do that if it's things that come up that absolutely like this is nothing to do with me whatsoever. Then I'll click that not interested button. Otherwise you just scroll through and you don't interact with it and so then that's how you teach it basically so to get started clean talk these are hashtags hashtag clean talk is amazing and it will change your life and i love it um there's like the home diy stuff on tiktok is incredible that's another great one so if you're just trying to kind of teach your algorithm to go like into more of a clean teaching kind of mode that's a good one um there's christian talk i recommend getting on there and starting with the 30 year olds and no matter how old you are and and start searching hashtags over 30 club, over 30s, plural club, moms of TikTok, moms over 30, and just put the different ages in there, go all the way up. So you've got moms over 40, moms over 50, over 60 club, over 70 club. Um, there's two sisters on there that are 89 and 91 years old and they've got millions of followers. <laughs> just the sweetest. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, wow. all, all the just, you know, like let's just clear the air about all the misconceptions of what TikTok used to be and what it actually is today. Um, yeah, uh, talk. Yeah, T O K. So basically, the name of the platform. You can put anything in front of it. Um, clean talk. That's all cleaning stuff, uh, which I think is fascinating. I love to watch it. Um, people do like um, ASMR videos on there, so they'll just do the real sound. So you'll see people like take. Um, they'll clean out the refrigerator, and the, but they let all the noises right. So it'll all be just noises of them putting things in the refrigerator. It's like fascinating. I, I watched it on repeat. <laughs> so what was the acronym you just said? ASMR. Okay, what does that mean? Um, I don't know. I don't know what it means. I know what it means, but I don't know how to tell you like the things. But it's um, just it's auditory. Sounds. Uh huh. It just sounds. Okay. You can go down a dark hole with that. So like, I wouldn't <laughs> go too deep into it, Google. But um, but a lot of people do that with those kinds of things. Like if they're refilling, like I want to re, like I want to redo my whole laundry room now based on what I'm seeing on TikTok. <laughs> um, 
but like they'll put like the, their pods and stuff like in the glass jars but they get the sound of the lid i don't know it's just soothing and fascinating to watch it makes me want to clean my house so anyway That's neat. But, yeah. can you do you have to use like the mobile device for tiktok as far as i know yeah i thought so as well so no no desktop version you can search on your desktop though, like that's much better now. Um, so you can watch them on your computer and you can interact with them if you're signed in. But I think creating, it has to be on your phone. I think as well, yep, yep. Okay, There's thanks. I just thought- oh, okay, a couple of people say, no, it works on the computer. Oh, well then, there you go. I, was, I think I was thinking of Instagram. They, they don't let you post on a desktop, I believe. I haven't done it, but okay, so that's good to know. And then Rhonda found the ASMR. Oh, no. I guess Patricia says, nope, you can post on Instagram too on your computer. So, you yes, I've changed things. Okay. Um, I, if you're going to post on Instagram, I like to use the Creator Studio, and I'll put the URL in here. It's business.facebook.com, and you can post to Facebook and um, Instagram. Creator Studio. Um, okay, so let's talk about what to start talking about on I'm gonna say TikTok, but you can use Reels too. Yeah, mom. Just before you go, uh, you started to talk about Rhonda's ASMR, and just again for the recording, let's go ahead and get this on here. So Rhonda put in the chat, thank you, Rhonda, that ASMR is a feeling of well-being combined with a tingling sensation in the scalp and down the back of the neck, as experienced by some people in response to a specific gentle stimulus, often a particular sound. It can be triggered, and then this is like a separate note. Uh, triggered by things like whispering voices, paper tearing, and scalp, 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 I can't read, scalp massage. That's interesting. I had never heard that um, acronym before. Look up some clean talks <laughs> and watch her do the refills. There's no audio. So this actually, like, you can use that same concept. There no, there's no voice audio. The whole audio comes from what they're doing. So very specific exaggerated sound awesome. pulling things out of the refrigerator i usually see it in terms of like the cleaning stuff people use it for all kinds of things though so interesting it's very it's very interesting like they put the thing down kind of hard that they move the thing i don't know but it is it's just you gotta just like i'll watch this all day um <laughs> so i wanted to give you i wanted to give you a couple people that i found over on tiktok that i follow one of them on instagram but they were Early on when I was starting to get in there and think, how, how am I going to use this? Like, I'm not a dancer. I don't want to be one of the people dancing on video. So how else is this used? Um, this guy is the one who kind of showed me first how people were using it for business. So his handle is mortgages are boring. I think there's periods in between the words. Mortgages are boring. So, but he's so funny. And so he'll do, he'll do characters. And so a character reels, so this is works for both. That's why this whole thing was on TikTok and reels. But although I might say TikTok more, I mean both. I always mean both unless I specify. So a character on a reel or TikTok is when you play two parts. Sometimes it's the client. Sometimes for kids, it's the mom. Uh, sometimes husbands are their wife. If you see a towel, I love people. Can I just say, if you see a towel on someone's head, they're being their mom or their girlfriend or it's another woman and the towel is their hair. I can't, it's just so funny. And that's what makes it so much fun is that it's so raw and so unprofessional that it just becomes about the content, whatever they're trying to do. But it makes me laugh when I see a towel on someone's head. I just cannot do it. So some people will use hat to be two characters or they'll turn one around. Um, but so he'll, he'll be the client and then he'll be the mortgage, what he does with the, as a realtor or that person. And so he goes through pain points or things that the clients do that are wrong. And so he'll be the client and then he's himself just doing two things, a video, and then he talks about it in the caption. So, so fun. So I learned a lot I, and I followed him because we were looking at houses then, right? So it met my need and now I follow him on Instagram. And so, um, and I've connected over there via DM. So I was just a little bit, just we're not really friends, just acquaintances, but anyway, he's so fun. So that was a good one to look at to say, okay, if I'm, if I'm wanting to teach something, this is a fun way to educate people on X, Y, Z, if you do a kind of business like that. And then the other one, this is the one I really want to talk about, Deshaun, the auto advisor. And I'm going to put his name and I'll spell it at D-E-S-H-O-N-E, -E, the auto advisor, because he is a success story like none other. Found him, I don't know, he came up in my explore page or, um explore on 
Instagram is this equivalent to the FYP or the For You page on TikTok. Basically, that is where the platforms say, you like people like this, so we think you're gonna like this person too. It wasn't until this last year that I ever spent time on the Explore page. Like I knew from reading about it, I knew that it was an important place to be, but I never utilized it until video became a thing because now Instagram and TikTok have become, this has become the television. Like we've already seen it, right? If I'm needing to just decompress, I have found that I now go to Instagram. I don't scroll through the feed anymore, which is important, important because where do photos go? They go on the feed, so do the reels. I go to the explore page and I find the first reel in the top corner because my, my algorithm is so trained to what I like to see. And I just start, and, it, and then I start kind of binging that content. And that could be the equivalent of watching like just an episode of a show on TV. I'm watching it on my phone with multiple creators, following people, interacting with them, sometimes sharing them back to my story and sometimes on TikTok as well. So it has become, I know that I'm not the only one who does that. So it's important to know how your audience is consuming content so that you're actually getting into that explore page because otherwise you may not be seen by anybody except the people who um, are following you. So let's go back to Deshaun. Deshaun, the auto advisor. We studied him. <laughs> so, like broke down what he did, when he did it to see why it worked. So he had a Facebook platform started over on TikTok and basically his whole thing is he used to work at Mercedes and like another luxury car thing. And so he started fresh on TikTok with 10 videos on what to, what to do or not to do when buying a car. Basics, 10 videos. I think he filled them over three days and it was just, he kind of just pushed them out. He's in his car the whole time. So I don't know if he just filmed all 10 and then posted them differently or if he did the next day. So he filmed those 10 videos. And so like he did the 10 videos and then it was like he posted two to three more videos for the next few days. And then he skipped a day and then posted two, would skip a day, post two. I'm not sure that he had any strategy to it in his mind, it was just what he did. However, he started that in May. And by the time I saw it, um, which was a couple months ago, he had already gone to like 30,000 followers and then jumped up and they like, I'm not sure where he's at right now, but he has, um, he was already given like the, he got the, three minutes early and then something else. So like he start, he just went like, he just shot up on there. I feel like I have to know how many followers he has right now, I gotta look it up. But anyway, so it was like, well, what did he do? And then why did it work, right? Like, how do you dissect it? And I think it was because I binged every video he had. And then I, cause I was learning so much from it. And so I think I told Kyle, I'm like, did you see this Sean? And it had popped up in his For You page too. And he goes, oh my gosh, I watched all of them, like me too. So I'm like, well, I have my PhD in buying a car now. <laughs> and that's how I felt after watching him. So I'm like, I know things that I didn't know before, even though I've researched this myself, it was that insider information that he gave in such a clear way. And I thought this is how we do this. We start at the basics for things and we just share tips on like what to do, not to do. And he's just speaking into the camera, that's all he was doing. And yet now he's got, um, so I've watched his progression of this. He now has an opt-in that he does, which is 52 things about the car buying industry that you need to know or something like that. He's a, so now he's pulling emails in and this has grown faster than his Facebook. So it's just, again, like why you have to diversify the content. I highly recommend looking him up and go down to his first videos, those first 10, because it was, it was just wonderful. Like I haven't seen, I don't know what he's doing anymore, I haven't really been following him since. I mean, if I follow him, but I don't watch his stuff that much anymore. I just binged everything he had at the beginning. He's amazing. Bethany. Yes. Uh, basic. Where do you find the explore page or for you page? Okay. So if you are on Instagram, let's start there. Okay. So the search, um, the magnifying glass at the bottom of the menu on your Instagram, where it takes you to search, this is what like mine looks it's got like all kinds of different, I know you can't see it, but like different squares and stuff. That's your explore page. It's got the search bar mm -hmm. at the top. And so they curate it based on um, accounts you've interacted with. They think you might like this. Um, like I've seen, my sister has popped up on my explore page before. I had a couple of friends. Sometimes they'll pop up in my explore page, which is kind of fun to see that. Um, 
Yep. And then there's reels. There's there's pictures in here, and then there's also reels from the videos. But typically, there's always a reel for me in the top corner over here. I just click that one. <laughs> I just start scrolling through, and I find and connect with people um, through there. And then on TikTok, it automatic. I think it auto. I'm gonna turn my volume down. You never know what's gonna pop up. TikTok. You never know what's gonna pop up on the for you page. Okay. So actually, it's Kyle. <laughs> So at the very top, um, it says following, and then it says for you. And so right now the for you is more bold. I don't know if you can see the difference in the two letters. So this is my explore page. So I already, it shows you people on TikTok who you're following and people who you might like. So um, I like Kyle, I'll give him a heart, whatever. And then I'm going, oh, and this is my friend, Alan. This is the guy who had that like super viral video. Like he's just kind of doing jokes. He's talking about comics and in, um, this one's called how to be TikTok famous back in my day. And then he's got um, Gen X TikTok. So that might be another hashtag to follow. And he's talking about Star Wars stuff. I found it. I never knew what that was. I just saw a bunch of puppy dogs pop up. Yeah. But and thanks. then you can always switch over to your following. And then that will show you only people that you follow already. So that way you can kind of, um, you know, you can see people. Great. Like this Thank you. Yep. Kitchen remodel. I love this stuff. So anyway, babies. Um, but, uh, baby. but can you be very basic for those of us that are really not even close to it yet and tell us what equipment even to use, how to get started, the real bare bones, yep. nitty gritty, how to make a video. All you need is your phone. As long as you have a, a phone with a camera that you can record video on, that is all you need and an internet connection. I guess you're only two things. <laughs> and um, one thing that Kyle's taught me, because he's grown his platform, I think he's either at or has hit almost to 300,000 followers. And this is like within a year or less, like he's just skyrocketed um, <clears throat> most of its video, well, all of it probably I would say, across his different multiple platforms. So when we have conversations about this, one thing that I kind of learned from listening to him was, this is how I interpret it and how I teach it now. Every, let everything be on your phone. So instead of using TikTok or Reels to film the video, which is what I was doing before, because TikTok has an amazing video editor. You can do a lot in there. So I was just using TikTok to film the video and then you get a watermark on it so you can't put it anywhere else. So Instead, what I'm teaching people, because what I'm doing is let the medium, not the platform, be your North Star, be your guide. So if we're going to do video, create a video, use your, use an app, which I like InShot, but there's a lot of different ones, but InShot's very intuitive. And it's I-N-S-H-O-T. And also you can change the canvas size of it, which is actually why I went ahead and, and paid the $14 for the year to get the watermark off is because you can change the canvas size to Instagram, Instagram story, TikTok. So you can do the video once at a certain size and then go back and change it to a different size so that you can put it on multiple platforms um, because you don't want the watermark to cross the platforms. Like for example, I believe it's Instagram that's more strict than TikTok right now, but like they won't push your video if they find the watermark of TikTok on it. Um, of course, there's exceptions to that, but um, so film your video and edit it to the length that you need it to be, and then take the video, put it on TikTok, take the video, put it on your IG reels or both or whichever one that you're going to use because you can't put a 60 second one on Instagram. So if you know that you're going to be talking more than a minute, I would say speed it up or tear it down a little bit for TikTok, unless you've got a three minute thing. If you've got the three minutes, you can put that on IGTV, which is I think gonna be really great because then you're just got the one video and you're putting it out there. But if you are doing 30 seconds, I always go to 29 seconds just so that I'm not cut off at the 30 second mark for an Instagram reel. That can also go on TikTok and it can help you there too because one way that TikTok, um, pays creators and Instagram is actually like, I just got a notification about they're going to be paying creators when they go live, some people. So they've already asked to set up like the business side with um, how to do payouts and things like that's happening. 
TikTok has art has been sending out payments for a while. I don't know a lot about it, but I know that watch time is a big thing. So if you see people who are doing these 10 second videos and they're putting a lot of text on there, you end up watching it two or three times because you're trying to read the text as a strategy to get people to watch the video two or three times to read the text, which is a good one maybe for you starting out, put text on it and let it be a shorter video so that it plays a couple of times, like let it play two or three so people get whatever it is. There's some on Instagram I see where uh, you know, people point at things at boxes. That's an easy way to do a video. Um, but they'll say, please slow down. Like they're not going to slow down. <laughs> There's a strategy behind it going fast. Like they're never going to slow it down. Um, I saw some questions come in, but just, I don't want to lose this train of thought and we'll go to questions. So film your video, decide how, where you're going to put it and how you're going to do that. And then for Instagram reels, I do things in parts so I can film a 60 second video and put it on TikTok, but then I can cut it at the 29, 30 second mark and put it over onto Instagram reels as a part one, part two situation. So when you're doing that, my tip is I watch the, well, Virginia Kerr is gonna tell you to look into the camera. I always looked kind of at the photo instead. Um, so she's taught me to like look up. I don't really always do it for Zoom because my camera's so much higher, but um, on my phone, that's something I learned from her. And because I'm looking at my camera, I can see the timer right underneath of it. And so as soon as I get to about 25 seconds, I need to wrap up this if I'm gonna be going into a part two because I can just cut that out on InShot very easily. It's really simple. And then it'll I can splice them together to put it on TikTok. So let the video live here and then you choose the platform to put it. So that's really, I think like the biggest thing to start. Don't feel like you need to learn each one's video editing you know, situation. You can grow into that. And there's people on TikTok too, like, I'll find, maybe I should curate a list of some of the people that I really love who teach things on TikTok. Cause there's one lady, she teaches you how to do all the trending stuff. Um, I'm like, I never would have figured that out, but she just goes, she has another phone and she teaches you step-by-step step, like what, click this, add this, touch this, you've got it. So um, I don't know her name, but I'll have to find it. But I saw questions come in. So I want to make sure, I want to make sure I get those. Well, uh, Melissa asked if Instagram's video editor is a separate app or is it found in Instagram itself? It's in Instagram itself. Okay. And Leslie asked about adding a watermark, um, but the watermark is from the company, right? Does TikTok put yeah. this watermark on their videos? So you're not yeah. adding it? No. And let's talk about the watermark. <clears throat> okay. So if you download, if you put a video on TikTok, TikTok will, okay, so it's called, they're called sounds on TikTok, and I think it's audio on Instagram Reels. So TikTok will let you download the sound and the video to your phone, but sometimes when you upload it to Facebook, even with the watermark, the sound distorts, like it's always off a little bit, even though it looks fine on your phone. But Instagram Reels will not let you download the sound, the audio with the video. So if you grab an audio clip from Instagram Reels to put on there, and then I always save it to my phone because I want the, I want the text or whatever I added into the reel. Sometimes I want that version of the video too. So I'll have multiple versions of the same video. The sound won't come with it on Instagram. So that's just something to know. And then the lady who does the hacks um, for TikTok, she said what she does, especially because you don't want to add all the text twice if it's a text-based thing. And people read. Um, I'm using captions a lot more. Like people are expecting captions for those who are hard of hearing, and a lot of people will watch TikTok or Reels with the sound off because the ki there's kids around or you don't know sometimes it's gonna pop up. I listen to a lot of it either with a headphone in or sometimes it's just on silent just because Justin doesn't, my husband doesn't wanna listen to it. <laughs> you know, so I read a lot of a lot of them. And so they have um, caption generators. TikTok has one that goes automatically, pulls all of your audio and you can edit the words that you do. So I've been using that a lot. So you don't have to type everything. But when you, so what she said she does is she films her video. She'll use um, TikTok's editor as well because it is it is fun to play around with the TikTok editor for sure. And then she wants to have the video that she's done without the TikTok watermark because it so it doesn't get booted, and so she'll have a clean copy of it. And so she will record her screen with the sound before she actually posts it. And I always forget to do that step. And so here on an iPhone, I know how to do it on an iPhone. So if you on the phone on, on an iPhone. 
I, this is where mine is, but it looks like this. Let me see if I'm trying to get it. It's that little circle in a circle. That's a screen recorder. And you can add that to like your widgets on the front and it'll, um, you can record anything on your phone screen uh, with your audio. And so she'll do that. I, when I have done it, I've let it play through twice just in case I missed the beginning of it while the recorder is starting, but then you, then you can just trim it. But that gives her a clean copy of the edited video to be able to use somewhere else because as soon as you post it, the TikTok watermarks it. And like I said, Instagram doesn't like that at all. <laughs> they don't like it at all. All right, going well. Someone, uh, Patricia wants someone to type out the steps on the sound. <laughs> you just say. <laughs> and I was just sitting here thinking, well, I'm a little lost myself, but oh I, no, but no. I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a lot, you know. And I like to see it too. Like if you were sitting beside me and I was yeah. doing it, that would be different. Um, but um, I'll tell you what. I'll send a five dollar gift card to the first person who tells me that they will listen to this again and type out those steps and put it on the writer's chat Facebook group. So if you want to do that, say, I will do that. And then I will send you a $5 Amazon gift card as soon as it's posted on the writer's chat Facebook <laughs> group. Okay. <laughs> a little tiny, a tiny incentive, <laughs> very tiny. <laughs> Um, I, Brandy, I think I missed a question. Was, wasn't there something else up there? Um, there were a couple, um, don't you have to follow, don't people have to follow you on Instagram TV to see your videos? Is that a good platform to start teaching content on? Yes and no. So it's a, yes, it is a great platform to teach content. And so again, I think we all need to channel Kyle just a little bit, which I'll never say again in my life, but think about video, think about video as your medium and then think what's the best way to share the information. So instead of thinking I need to do an IGTV video, well, that was a little bit redundant, but you know, <laughs> instead of I need to do, I need to do a reel today. Instead, let's, we got to, this is what I'm teaching myself to do too. I need to teach, I need to create five pieces of 30 second video content. Do I want that to be two and a half minutes or three minutes of one thing or do I wanna split it into parts? And then, okay, it's gonna work best like this. I've got a two and a half minute video just for whatever. That will work on my TikTok because I have three minutes and it will work on IGTV and it's probably long enough to go over on YouTube. So now I'm gonna create the content. I know which platforms I'm gonna share it on. I create the content and then I post it where it'll work best, okay? But it, so Instagram is rewarding IGTV plus reels plus stories. And so as I've been watching and listening to them, it's doing a combination of all of them. Although I am seeing people say, you don't have to post every day. And I don't know if it's because they've reached a certain point where people are, interacting with their page enough to where they're still getting the algorithm or if it's because they're posting the right kinds of content for Instagram to where they're not seeing a dip in followers or um, if they're not posting every day. But I would recommend doing stories every day. It's a really great place to get started on video and be comfortable. That's where I got comfortable on video after Periscope. Peris Periscope is where I got comfortable on video. That was Twitter's kind of live thing. And then Instagram stories was the second. And I think that the, what it's gonna do for us as writers, pulling it back into writers, is it teaches you how to tell story in 30 seconds or less and how to go into parts. And I will tell you, you will always hear that writing tight teaches you to write better because you have to have every word matters. And so that's the same exact thing. The written word will always be there, right? But video is not going away and, I, and it's being rewarded in a, in a way even more so than it was before. So it's just learning how to tell that story, whether it's through pictures, teaching someone something, adding value or entertainment. And then do they have to follow you on IGTV? So you don't really, I mean, I guess maybe you could follow someone's IGTV, but if I'm following them, I can always go look into their IGTV and sometimes that'll show up maybe on the explore page to answer that question, but um, 
you don't have to follow someone to watch their Instagram TV videos. And IGTV is Instagram's competition for YouTube. So if you hear yourself saying, I can put this on IGTV, let that, that trigger, I'll also go ahead and put it on YouTube. Okay, like, so you're kind of, now we've got the one piece of content that we're focusing on. And now we're using that on the multiple platforms that makes social media marketing a whole lot easier. Cause you're not worrying about Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and Facebook. You're like, I have one piece of content and I'm gonna put it out here this way. So much easier. Um, somebody did ask, I didn't, don't wanna to forget to ask, um, can you use InShot to edit videos for more than just one platform? Yeah, so it's a video okay, okay. editor and I also use okay. it for um, pictures. So like you can create a cover photo for your reels in Instagram. And so sometimes I'll use InShot to kind of create that cover with text. And I also will put photos into it and then put text on top of it because it stops the scroll, I think, when people are reading. So um, so I use InShot a lot. Like I said, I I had, I had gotten it once and I'm like, eh. And then I was using it again, like a year later, just at the beginning of the year. And then when I saw that the canvas is in the, it's in the menu bar, to the far left, when I saw that I could change the size, uh, that was it for me. I was like, that's it, done. And it's a very intuitive app. I mean, you've got 10 year olds, nine year olds using InShot. So it is intuitive for that reason because they only think intuitively growing up in here. If it doesn't, if it's not where it should be, then they don't use the app, right? So it's intuitive, but because it's been around and so popular, there are tutorials for everything. And so I didn't know how to do stuff on there. So I go to Google because <laughs> I don't have time to learn it. Like I don't have time to mess around with the app. So I'm like, how do I do this? How do I do this in InShot? Boom, there's like five YouTube videos. Boom, mm. there's a step-by-step -step guide on the basics. But that's how we can use our own platforms to teach people because people are searching the basics. <laughs> yeah. Deshaun, the auto advisor, <laughs> the basics. <laughs> and now I know everything there is to know about cars. Just kidding. <laughs> he was amazing. We've got about three or four more questions, but we are getting close to the top of the hour. So I'm going to ask people to start coming back on. I know I put some people in writer's chat jail, as we love to call it. So if you can't get back on, let me know. And while people are popping on, uh, I'm going to go back, try to kind of do these in order. Uh, Jill asks, since I'm beginning on IGTV, should I go ahead and begin my YouTube channel? Yes. 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 Me too. Me too. I'm in the, I'm in the <laughs> with you. Yes. And Nancy asked a really good question, the difference between stories, reels, and IGTV. Yes. Yeah. Let me to go ahead and answer that one. Yeah, go ahead and answer that one. And then we have at least two, uh, gosh, we got at least three more. Okay. Well, I did see a comment. So you are okay, going to see, you are going to see people having a TikTok watermark on Instagram. It does get through. The, the thing that I've been listening to that people who have like starting really creating platform with it is they're saying that it um, Instagram holds back on the push for it though. So you might see it, but if you're like trying to be intentional about it, they're saying, don't let, don't put that watermark on there. Um, Cause you just never know what gets through, why we don't know, but they do not like it. I will say <laughs> they do not like it. They want you using their program. And so they do like D whatever those videos, even though we'll, we're still gonna see them. So I just think, okay, I don't, I don't want to learn a way to where it becomes muscle memory. And then I have to change it because I get restricted for it, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to teach myself, like, this is my muscle memory way to do this as I'm learning myself. Okay. Stories. So on Instagram, you have stories, reels, and IGTV. So I think of them as building blocks because they have different time. They have different times that you can use for them, but they're three very kind of separate ways to deliver content. So the story is where you click on your headshot in your bio area and you can add photo, text, there's tons you can do in stories. It's great for, it's great for daily engagement with your audience because you can ask questions, you can do polls. That is very much a behind the scenes. And so like mom, <laughs> mom. Yes. <laughs> so like with all the book deadlines that you're under, <laughs> you could literally if you're eating lunch at your desk, get a picture of your lunch at your desk I do and that. post it on your stories, working through lunch as I work on da 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 da, -da novel. That would be amazing <laughs> because you're teaching your audience, number one, to look at stories, but two, 
it's very focused on what you're doing as a writer. And it also lets them know that you have a book coming out. So all of a sudden the people are on this journey with you to book, which makes it easier than to sell the book at the end, right? Or people love inside the life of a writer. I don't know, like, or inside the life of anybody. So those, those are the kinds of things you can do um, for writing. And then if you see things that are trending, I save everything like um, on, let's say Instagram, for example, if you're watching a reel, you can save the audio. You can also save the video. And so it's like the little three dots in the sidebar. I save them because I think I could use that with my audience. So I might, it's maybe the sound of it that I think I could use, or someone did it in such a creative way that I thought I could use that for my people and put my spin on it. So I save them because that, then when you're like, okay, I've got 30 minutes and I'm just going to make a couple of videos. What do I post? I don't have anything to talk about. You can just go to your saved videos and just rewatch the ones that you really liked and be like, okay, I can just use that audio and know exactly what I'm going to do. I would recommend like having a tripod. They're so expensive um, because then you can put them on your desk. So I did one for, as an example on this, I think I put it on the serious writer Instagram, but um, it was 10 seconds. And I just did like myself typing, getting ready to announce the contest winners with the sound. Um, and it was so, it was just easy. I was already doing it. So I just filmed myself doing it and then kind of looked at the camera, but it was also short enough to go into an Instagram story because it was only 10 seconds. So that's something that could go on TikTok. It can go in the story. I could make it a reel if I wanted to, but it was kind of like a behind the scenes kind of thing. And then a reel is more of that 30 second video. And then IGTV is longer. I think it, at this point, it still has to be a, at least a minute long. So Instagram's losing that 30 second to a minute video, but they know that. So I don't know why they do that, but they made that decision. So, so you just got to, Instagram TV is also a little bit longer. So what Virginia Kerr, who I mentioned at the beginning, okay. what she'll do sometimes is she'll do a, um, she'll do an IGTV, a video. She'll go two or three minutes into the video and then she'll say for the rest of it, click over to YouTube. I've got the whole video there. So she's directing you from her Instagram. She puts the, the little snapshot on the profile, right? On your feed, because you can click there and then they'll say, keep watching. Sometimes you get a little box that says, keep watching. Those are IGTV. So you click keep watching and now you're in her Instagram TV area. And then she'll direct you in the caption to go over to her YouTube. Brilliant. <laughs> So what, so what she's doing, she's filming a longer piece of content, right? And then now she's shortening it and then directing. So YouTube is going to work very, very well with Instagram. It's also going to work very well with TikTok. They're all going to work very well together. Um, was that the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a little bit distracted by getting people out of writer's chat jail. So I was, I didn't know if I had missed something along the line there, but we do have a couple more. We've got like four more questions and we really do need to wrap up. So um, I'm going to go backwards because I'm not sure where we are. What kind of tripod do you use? That's a, that should be an easy question <laughs> to answer. <laughs> Start small because I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> so really, you got to think about what kind of content you're wanting to do. So I really want to up my game when it comes to planners because I love it so much and start filming myself actually doing it and kind of sharing that way. So I need one that's going to be more of an overhead. So if you're doing anything where you're wanting to cook or uh, show how to do something, I have a small oh. one upstairs in the kitchen that's about this big. And then I have this one that I just got. So it has like a, a thing for your phone here and a couple of lights. And so I'm testing to see if it's gonna work. Like if I can clamp it to my desk and still have my hands here. And then can I get the phone angle right? So that's kind of what I'm testing with this one. But then I can also put it across from me if I want to do like a teaching video or even um, while I'm working. Um, I did like five hours of appointments last week um, for the conference. And so I set up a ring light tripod behind my desk. And then I set the video to time lapse. So it only takes a picture or a video every so many seconds. It's where it like really speeds up. It was running for five hours. Um, but it, it put it, it was only 20 seconds when I actually looked at the video itself. So I didn't have to edit it at all. I just uploaded it. So I was like, that was five hours and 20 seconds worth of time. So time-lapse is a good um, a thing to use if it's going to be a long thing that you're just wanting to show, but you're not wanting to maybe speak. And then also voiceover is a good thing too. So you can film something 
like my kids are always coming in here at summer or I will watch um, like I have a show in the background when I'm doing something because I'm just kind of thinking and working through something. But if I'm wanting to show it, I can go into InShot, take the volume out, the original audio out with like a click and then I can upload it into TikTok or Instagram and then do a voiceover mm-hmm. there for it or just do text or just let the sound be the sound. So, um, so I have like a ring light, like a big one, a tall one, a small one upstairs in the kitchen. And then I've got this guy, which I'm testing to see if it's going to work for like an overhead down here. But it's just, you start with one, just start with one that you think is going to work for what you need it, need it to be. You can also just hold your phone, which is, it, it's so, the more professional you try to get with it, the worse it's going to be. <laughs> just do it. Like, that is gone. Like, it. good to if, know. If you, watch, if you were watching the progression happen in early 2020, you watch the progression. Okay. So just trust me. Just trust me. The, there's, don't, don't go crazy with the editing. The, the, your least edited video is the one that's going to go viral anyway because that's just the way life is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I think what I'm gonna do, because it is getting past time, we're, that we'll go ahead and um, I'm gonna quickly look to see what we're doing next week. I know we've got a few more questions. If Bethany can hang on, we'll, we'll stop the recording and, and do those off camera. Um, Cause you know, we always like to give something extra to the people who are actually here. Uh, but that we do love you who watch the replay too and invite you to join us every Tuesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, if you'd like to be part of the community. Um, next week, we are going to be having Wendy Lanier with us, and she's going to be talking about the perks and pitfalls of work for hire projects. So that should be pretty interesting. Um, really excited about that. Um, it, yeah, and I think then... I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the recording and thank you for being here. You who are here, thanks for watching the replay for doing that. And we'll see you next time on Writer's Chat. Those of you who are here, stay around and we'll try to get to the rest of those questions. Bye everybody.